Charlie and Candace, thank you for coming. My name is KJ Eichstead. I'm 28, so I feel like I can relate to a lot of what you do. Um, my question I wanted to ask you as someone who builds brands for a living and helps other people build their brands, I wanted to ask you about Elon Musk, who has the most powerful brand in the world, and also what advice would you give to people for building a brand in the face of controversy and adversity? Uh, okay, I'm going to start with the Elon Musk question. I think what he is doing is fantastic, and there's no way to lose. And what I mean by that is that obviously Twitter is going – the Twitter execs are going to block this, obviously. Um, but it, it doesn't matter because it's leading to a global awakening about just how corrupt the system is. Um, and so I think this has been one of those – those moments of sunshine, which has provided like a disinfectant, and people are really seeing just how corrupt it is. I mean, there's no reason not to accept that deal. I mean, Twitter as a company has been floundering. I mean, they, they have not earned any money for their shareholders. They won't even bring it to them because it has become such an ideological battleground, right? We know that if he ever got into that company, into the weeds of it, we would see that, I mean, Saudi Arabia, like suddenly the left is supporting. So I, I know, like, so we're saying, like, just speaking out and saying, I'm against this. And I've said, this for years. I mean, Twitter has been operating bot accounts. They've been creating faux trends, things that are not possibly trending. They make trend. I think they have an allegiance with certain publications as well. The Daily Beast somehow has a way to make their stories trend. Um, and there's a lot of political corruption. I think they, they put a ton of fake followers around people that they want. Like, I, I believe AOC, they created overnight. I really do believe that. And so they will not re release Twitter because it would, it would honestly... Uh, provide a window into just how corrupt the system is, but what Elon Musk is doing is is absolutely brilliant. Um, and yeah, it's not going to go through, obviously. And I think eventually he'll just pull out all of his money, and that'll be that. And he made tons of money, and it's great. And America will be better for have see, see, seeing it all up. Like America will have been better just for having an opportunity to see just how dysfunctional it is, and just how corrupt, and how we really don't live um, in the economy and in the world that we believe that we do. I'll answer the brand. Do you have any thoughts on the brand issue? Oh, no, you can go. You can answer okay. that. So just on the Twitter thing super quick, this is where I disagree with some people on the right that are market fundamentalists. I love markets. Candace loves markets. But the Twitter example shows that the profit motive is actually not the highest on the hierarchy. It isn't. And we've always believed that the profit motive drives all human behavior, and that's wrong. If that was true, they would accept the Elon Musk deal, and the deal would be done. There are things that matter more than the profit motive, and that's the prestige and the power motive, which actually matters a lot more than the profit motive when you talk about human psychology. So the Twitter board of directors, they're not running a company. Mm -mm. They're running something closer to like a Democrat super PAC regime propaganda censorship machine that... Yes, yes well said. Thank you. Yeah. That exists to stifle the voices they don't like and elevate the ones they like. Right. And so it just goes in to show how hard they're fighting. Like, yeah, a Saudi prince comes out. Really? How's freedom of speech in Riyadh in the spring? I'd love to hear about that. How's press freedom in Medina? Like... Can you say something against Muhammad during Ramadan in Saudi Arabia? Of course not. Like, it's the greatest hypocrisy ever that a Saudi prince tries to come and be like, yes, I'm going to stand for free speech. Like, how about you sit this one out? Like, the one issue the Saudis should sit out is, like, how they treat journalists. Like, not exactly a lot of credibility in the last couple decades on that issue. Like, maybe oil exploration. You guys can, you know, chime in next time. So, but it shows a window into how important censorship is to these people. Mm -hmm. That they need the ability to shut us up. I'm suspended from Twitter right now. First, I didn't do anything wrong. Um, and I love how people applaud, right? And I, I, I called Rachel Levine, that one, I said Richard Levine, uh, Rachel, I can't remember, now Rachel used to be Richard, it's called dead naming, you can't do that. I refuse to delete the tweet, I refuse to engage in a Soviet show trial where like, you have to acknowledge doing something wrong even though you didn't. Candace is exactly right though. I don't think the deal is going to go through. I don't want to be cynical, but I think they have unintentionally red pilled the world rich world's richest man, which might about be the dumbest thing you could possibly do. Where now like center right non woke causes are going to have a three hundred billion dollar man and the owner of SpaceX, Tesla, the boring company, Neuralink, and someone who's like the greatest engineering mind in a hundred years being dedicated to abolish the woke left. Like good job, Twitter. You're yeah. next. Like. Thank you. Sorry, I'm, the brand thing, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, lean into the controversy. That's my advice. I know that's short. Controversy can be the greatest signal boost to any brand if you play it right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.